During the worst of 2020's market crash, foreign stocks lost 33% of their value over a period of just 33 days. But Canadian investors holding foreign stocks fared slightly better, losing just under 28% over the same period. This return advantage was due to our exposure to foreign currencies, like the US dollar, the Japanese yen, the euro, and the Swiss franc, which all appreciated relative to the Canadian dollar during this time. All of the foreign equity ETFs included in the CPM model portfolios also provide investors with exposure to foreign currencies. Some of these ETFs can be purchased with your Canadian dollars, while others require you to trade in US dollars. This can lead investors to assume their ETF's currency exposure is the same as the currency their ETF transacts in, which may not be the case. I'm Justin Bender, Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital. In this episode of the Canadian Portfolio Manager, I'll show you why the currency in which your ETF transacts has no relationship to your ETF's currency exposure. A CPM blog reader recently sent in their currency-related question regarding two U.S. equity ETFs from our model portfolios. Mark from Ottawa writes, What is the currency exposure when investing in XUU, which transacts in Canadian dollars on the Toronto Stock Exchange, and ITOT, which trades in U.S. dollars on the New York Stock Exchange? And as a Canadian, would it not be best for me to just hold my funds in Canadian dollars to avoid currency fluctuations? With XUU, ITOT, or any other unhedged U.S. stock market ETF, you actually have not one, but two investments. The first investment is the U.S. stock market, while your second investment is the U.S. dollar. And like most investments, you ideally want them both to go up in value. If you were to purchase XUU with your Canadian dollars, BlackRock, which is the manager of iShares ETFs, We'll need to convert your loonies to dollars in order to buy the various US-based ETFs held by the fund, like I taught. At this point, you no longer have exposure to Canadian dollars, even though XUU transacts in Canadian dollars. You're now invested in the US stock market and the US dollar, which is similar to if you had just converted your loonies to dollars and purchased I taught directly on the New York Stock Exchange. So purchasing XUU with your Canadian dollars does not avoid currency fluctuations between the Canadian dollar and the US dollar. It does, however, avoid you having to initially convert your loonies to dollars in order to purchase US stocks, as BlackRock will take care of the step for you. As an example, suppose there are two Canadian buddies, Bill and Ted, who each have 10,000 Canadian dollars they'd like to invest in either XUU or ITOT. We'll also assume one US dollar is initially worth 1.3231 Canadian dollars at the onset, but appreciates to 1.4482 Canadian dollars by the end of the measurement period. As mentioned earlier, an appreciation of the foreign currency against our domestic currency is a good thing for an unhedged Canadian investor. Now, Bill doesn't want to deal with currency conversions, so he decides to just purchase XUU with his 10,000 Canadian dollars. And behind the scenes, BlackRock will take Bill's loonies and convert them to US dollars in order to transact on the US stock market. Unfortunately, his timing couldn't be worse. Bill invests his cash at the top of the market on February 19th, 2020. And immediately following the purchase, his XUU holdings proceed to plummet before finding a bottom of 7,148 Canadian dollars on March 23rd, 2020. Bill has lost around 29% of his investment, at least on paper. His pal Ted starts by converting his 10,000 Canadian dollars to 7,558 US dollars at a rate of 1.3231. He then purchases ITOT with his US dollars on February 19th and watches in horror as the fund loses 35% of its value in US dollar terms. Ted bottoms out at a value of 4,913 US dollars on March 23rd, with his ITOT holdings dropping by an extra 6% relative to Bill's XUU holdings, which only dropped by 29%. On March 23rd, Ted sells his entire ITOT holding and converts his 4,913 US dollars back to 7,114 Canadian dollars at the current exchange rate of 1.4482. And after the conversion back, he realizes he actually has almost as many loonies as his buddy Bill, 
and he has lost only around 29% in Canadian dollar terms. In short, Bill and Ted both benefited about equally from their US dollar exposure over this period. Because the US dollar appreciated by 9.5% against the Canadian dollar, it helped save their Canadian bacon to some extent. And due to similar US stock market and US currency exposure in both XUU and ITOT, both holdings fell in value by nearly 29% once converted back to Canadian dollar terms. This represented a 6% improvement over the overall US stock market drop of 35%. Although this first example focused on a single foreign stock market with only one underlying currency, the same currency concepts also apply to ETFs that invest in multiple foreign stock markets. Let's take the example of XEF, which is the iShares Core MSCI EFI IMI Index ETF. It invests in developed countries outside North America, such as Japan, France, Switzerland, and many others. And instead of one currency, there's multiple such as the Japanese yen, the euro, and the Swiss franc. When a Canadian investor provides BlackRock with Canadian dollars to purchase units of XEF, BlackRock will need to convert these Canadian dollars to the various underlying currencies in order to transact in these foreign stock markets. So Canadian investors will no longer have exposure to the Canadian dollar. Now, let's take the example of IEFA, which is the iShares Core MSCI EFI ETF. It's also XEF's US-based counterpart, so it has similar stock market exposure. A Canadian investor would need to initially convert their Canadian dollars to US dollars to purchase IEFA. But to purchase the underlying foreign stocks for their fund, BlackRock will need to convert the US dollars to the various underlying currencies, such as the Japanese yen, the euro, and the Swiss franc. So IEFA investors will no longer have exposure to the US dollar. This makes IEFA's foreign currency exposure similar to that of XEF, even though one transacts in US dollars and the other in Canadian dollars. If XEF and IEFA both invested 27% of their assets into Japanese companies, 30% into Eurozone companies, and 10% into Swiss companies, Canadian investors would have a 27% exposure to the Japanese yen, 30% exposure to the Euro, and 10% exposure to the Swiss franc. These currency exposures would be in addition to the stock market exposures of each region. XEF would have little to no exposure to the Canadian dollar, and IEFA would have little to no exposure to the US dollar, even though they transact in these two respective currencies. Similar to Bill and Ted's XUU and ITOT pairings, Canadian investors who held XEF or IEFA during the worst of the 2020 stock market crisis experienced similar performance once all currencies were converted back to Canadian dollar terms. Between the market's peak on February 19th and the market bottom on March 23rd, international stocks lost 31% of their value in local currency terms. Over the same period, the underlying international currencies appreciated against the Canadian dollar by around 6.1%. Again, this helped reduce the bleeding for Canadian investors. Specifically, after accounting for currency exposure, XEF fell in value by around 27% in Canadian dollar terms. IEFA, which trades in US dollars, lost a third of its value in US dollar terms. This lower return was due to the 3.4% depreciation of the foreign currencies relative to the US dollar. However, once the US dollars are converted back to Canadian dollars, IEFA returned around 27% in Canadian dollar terms, which was similar to XEF. Emerging markets equity ETFs followed a similar pattern over the same period. Emerging markets companies lost 28% of their value in local currency terms. But due to the 4.3% average appreciation of the underlying emerging markets currencies relative to the Canadian dollar, XEC lost only around 25% of its value. Across the border, XCC's US-based counterpart IEMG lost nearly 32% of its value due to the 5.1% depreciation of the underlying emerging markets currencies relative to the US dollar. However, once IEMG's US dollar returns are converted back to Canadian dollars, IEMG only lost around 25% of its value, tightly tracking XCC's performance along the way. By now, I hope I've made it clear. The currency in which your ETF transacts 
does not determine your currency exposure. It could just as easily transact in the Japanese yen, the euro, or the Swiss franc, and still provide you with the same investment return in Canadian dollar terms. So no matter what currency you use when you purchase your iShares or Vanguard foreign equity ETFs, BlackRock or Vanguard may need to convert your Canadian or US dollars to other currencies in order to transact in the various foreign stock markets. This means the currency you've provided does not provide any useful information for determining your ETF's underlying currency exposure. There's one more type of foreign equity ETF I'd like to touch on before we go, and that's the .U ETFs. These .U funds are just another version of many of the existing ETFs that trade in Canadian dollars, such as XUU, XEF, and XEC. The only difference is they trade in US dollars under the ticker symbols that include a .U at the end. Examples include XUU.U, XEF.U, and XEC.U. Don't let the .U and the ticker symbols fool you though. Similar to US-based ETFs like ITOT, IEFA, and IEMG, .U ETFs transact in US dollars, but once again, their underlying stock markets determine their currency exposure. For example, when comparing their returns in US dollars, we would expect XUU.U to have nearly identical performance to ITOT. And in fact, during the 2020 stock market crash, ITOT and XUU.U both lost around 35% of their value in US dollar terms. Also, once you convert both funds' performance to Canadian dollar terms, XUU.U and ITOT provided similar returns to their Canadian-based counterpart, XUU. In fact, during the worst of the 2020 market downturn, all three ETFs dropped by essentially the same amount, just under 29% in Canadian dollar terms. The same would apply for international equity ETFs that transact in US dollars. Both XEF.U and IEFA dropped by around 33% during the worst of the 2020 downturn. Once their performance was converted to Canadian dollar terms, both funds lost around 27% which was nearly identical to XEF's return over the same period. And on the emerging markets front, XEC.U and IEMG each fell by just under 32% in US dollar terms. But when their performance was converted to Canadian dollar terms, XEC.U, IEMG, and XEC all lost around 25%. This brings us back to my opening theme. It doesn't matter whether you buy your foreign equity ETFs with Canadian dollars, US dollars, or any other currency. Even if BlackRock were to release a series of .Y Japanese yen traded ETFs or .E Euro traded ETFs, the same rules would apply. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching. I'm Justin Bender of PWL Capital, and this is the Canadian Portfolio Manager. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to also check out the Canadian Portfolio Manager podcast and the Canadian Portfolio Manager blog for more useful investing tips.